Welcome to God of Love. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest today is Marty Kuntz. She is the founder of Run Street. What is Run Street? It's a movement that promotes street art running, good nutrition, lots of exercise, and most importantly, loads of fun and positivity. I am thrilled to have Marnie as a guest. Thank you. Marnie, before we cover Run Street, which is totally fascinating, especially all the photographs of the murals that you show, it's absolutely stunning. Before we go into that, let's introduce you to our audience. Tell us where you were born and something about your growing up years. Okay, I'm from St. Louis, so I grew up there. I have two sisters. I was very active. We always played outside a lot, and I grew up running, and I started doing cross country when I was in junior high. And then I ran track, and since then, I've just always been running. Okay. And what about after high school? Did you go on to higher education? I did, yeah. So I went to college in Illinois, like between St. Louis and Chicago, and I studied creative writing, so I was an English major. Ah, oh, creative writing. Probably helped on your blog later on. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. If I remember in, in the book, there's something about Irish history. Did you study that as well? I did. My mom is Irish American, and I studied in Ireland in college for a semester. I studied Irish history, and it was very interesting. I learned a lot. Um, we went to Northern Ireland, learned about the sectarian division, and and I learned a lot about Irish literature too. That's great. Great. Now, Marnie, I, I mentioned a few people to my guest that's named Marnie, and they go, that's an interesting name. It's, does Marnie mean anything? And uh, is, it, is there a, a story behind that name? Yeah, actually, my aunt's name is Maureen, and they called her Marnie, and then my mom just named me Marnie. It's also a Hitchcock movie, but <laughs> oh, oh, <there laughs> but that's is? just a coincidence. So you're not Maureen, you're Marnie. I'm Marnie, yeah. Okay. Well, do you get a lot of compliments on your name? Yeah, I do sometimes, yeah. Okay. Well, I thought we cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you have to decide where to live, you know, what's your next move. What was the process for that? So the process, it was pretty busy. Like, I've kind of moved a lot since college. I moved back to St. Louis. I did an internship at a newspaper there, and then I couldn't find a job, so I kind of applied all over. And my friend, who I met studying in Ireland, she was going to Rutgers, and so she, we were best friends after we studied abroad together and I ended up moving there because I liked the East Coast and and then I started working at a newspaper in New Jersey and then eventually I got a job in Atlanta. My friend had left New Jersey, she went to California and I moved, I got a job in Atlanta, I moved there for four years, I was a newspaper editor and then I was freelancing when I started doing Run Street. In Atlanta? Actually, I had then moved back to St. Louis briefly, and there were some family things, and unfortunately, my grandmother passed away. She was very sick at the Sorry time. To hear that. Thank you. And my dog, too, passed away. So it was, it was kind of a rough time. And in St. Louis? Yeah, in St. Louis. And then an outlet was running for me and okay. also writing. So Okay. Yeah. Okay, you said you did some running in, in high school, cross country. Right. So, so when these bad things happened in uh, St. Louis, was that the, that helped you go back into running as an outlet? I think it did. Yeah, I mean, I kind of always ran, but there were some times where I ran more than others. And in St. Louis, I started. I did my first half marathon, and I started training more for longer distance things. And just just in general, I've always found kind of like sweat therapy and working out, so. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I think at some point you were a dancer, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was writing for a fitness magazine and I was covering fitness trends and I did one, an article on pole fitness and then that, I really loved the class when uh -huh. I took it and then I got into pole fitness and I got certified to be an instructor, so I was an instructor in St. Louis. My for God, a while. what an interesting career! And you, see, you look like you're such a young person, but we've got <laughs> lots more to cover. Remember that pole dancing was in the news, was hot for a while, and it looked extremely difficult. But you got to, you know, upper body strength incredibly to, to hold those poses. Yeah. I, I would imagine that's mostly a young person's kind of a thing. Well, you'd be surprised. There's all different ages. 
there are a lot of young people and then a lot of people who start it kind of stick with it. It's kind of like its own fitness movement. Interesting, interesting. It's probably a little more niche now than, uh, than mainstream. Right, yeah. Okay. In St. Louis, you founded Run Street. And Run Street, such an interesting idea to, to run towards art. So what inspired you to do that? Well, at first it started as I got certified as a running coach and then I thought I'll do training articles, but I always like photos and I've always liked street art. I think it really took on a new level when I moved to New York because I found so much cool art here. And then I had started a running group and people started asking me, where do you find this? Can we go see it? And I thought, well, uh, I'll okay. do Okay, so you started running. your blog talking about the things you were seeing, the street art. Yeah. It used to be called graffiti, but now it's been <laughs> upgraded. Right, yeah. Well, I remember, you know, back when I was growing up, these guys would go into tunnels and, and, and do graffiti, they call it graffiti at that time, on subway carts. Uh, Some of it was pretty bad, but occasionally you go, wow, that, whoever did that really has talent. So I guess it became above ground, and at some point somebody said, we got to give these artists an outlet. Yeah. And I didn't realize that some of, some of that happened in St. Louis when you were there briefly? Um, not as much of the art. I used some as like backgrounds for my photos for like, I would post fitness workouts uh -huh. and stuff. Um, I've always been interested in like street style workouts that you could do with no equipment, like uh -huh. calisthenics. Uh -huh. So I would do those workouts and sometimes I would have graffiti in the background or street art. And in St. Louis, there's a big wall, it's called Paint Louis. It's like a mile and a half um, art wall where all these artists come and paint. Every year they have a big festival and they paint. That's really cool, it's by the arch. So yeah, sometimes yeah. I would do yeah, stuff yeah, there. Yeah, okay. You know, when you stick a street art, it's out in the open, it's, it's subject to the elements. Is it temporary art? To, to, to a large extent where, you know, a new group comes in and sort of we, we do it or we start, you know, is that part of the, the charm? I think so, yeah. It's like, for better or worse, it's usually not there that long. Like in New York, we have the Bowery Graffiti Wall, which you might have seen it's the one with all the blue people on Houston uh -huh. and Bowery, and that changes. So they have it commissioned and they bring in a new artist to do a new work. Um, I think it's about annually that they change that. Interesting, interesting. But, but yeah, it varies because some art is up for pretty long and others, like a lot of businesses also have art and so they decide if they want to have a new mural or keep up what they have. Okay, or... okay, so I guess the artists might do prints and you know, and. and and store that, archive it, so that, uh, you know, they have a history of their work. Yeah. I mean, in the old days, you know, I guess they just paint over it and that was lost forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, t you're young. Did, did you ever run into Keith Haring? He was, uh, he was a very, very popular... He died very young, 32, maybe before your time. I think it was before I got to New York, because okay. I haven't been here. Yeah, he was famous with his chalk. Long. You wait, if you see his, you see his art, you know instantly oh. because his image was, you know, so, so recognizable. His vocabulary just spoke to you. Really. And, and there's a breakground that, that he did a mural. It's called "Crack Is Whack Playground." And oh. it's on 128th Street along the Holland River Drive. Okay. And that, and that drive is being uh, rebuilt. And so they protecting the art, so it's covered. Oh. But it's going to be open up in 2020. So I have a feeling the way you think, uh, that's what should be one of your destination runs in yeah. approximately 2020. Yeah, I should start planning ahead for that. Okay. Well, it's interesting that there's more to learn about this thing because if, if you talk to other people, don't know about things that you don't know, but you're more up to date with the current stuff. Now, I saw your website and the photographs of the murals are just stunning. I mean, you couldn't keep your eyes off them. And then you notice the runners in the front, oh, look at that, you know, <laughs> these people are standing there, you know, with the poses. But the eye goes to the art, which I find totally fascinating that your photographer was able to do that. You know, it's very talented. Oh, thanks. And, and I saw your list on your website. You have 
a fantastic list of where you can find street art throughout the city, Manhattan particularly. I didn't look through all of them, but I was fascinated by the superheroes one, where the artist uh, has a cause and that's catcalling. Oh, know? right, yeah. yeah. We're, I'm totally fascinating that many of the artists associate their art, not necessarily a rebellion against something, but for something, for a cause. Mm -hmm. Now, I was thinking about it, you know, it didn't, in the old days, there was negative news. Perhaps that's changed. But are most of the artists that you encounter, are they mostly male? Is there female artists? Is that a, an opportunity for women to get into? Yeah, that's a good question. I have met some female artists, and it was great. I've become friends with some of them. There's definitely less female artists than male, but it seems like it's becoming more common now for female artists and that there's more than what there used to be. Yeah, from yeah. What I, understand. I would imagine that many of them were, were inspired by comic books and movies like Star Wars. People would create fantastic looking art, usually digital, that I, the ones I've seen of all the characters. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems to be male dominated for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the culture doesn't encourage women to, to to be artistic in that sense. Do you have any idea about that? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, and that might be a lot of things in general. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's just that women maybe are less encouraged in certain fields or if, but I know like my mom does art too. She's always been very artistic and so I grew up appreciating art, and then it's cool to see other women doing art that they like. And, and for me, I think being a woman runner and an athlete and a coach, sometimes people will ask me, like, oh, is it hard being a woman? And I, and I feel like it's just something you love, so you just do it, mm -hmm. you know, no matter who you are. If you, mm -hmm. if you love doing something, you just kind of do it. And, okay. So but, you yourself are not a street artist. You're a, a fan of street art. Yeah. And you appreciate, and you, and you interview them too, the artist. Right. So you know their lingo, or I guess there's a lingo to learn, right? You know, the style. And what motivates or inspires those artists? Everyone's different. I know the one you mentioned, the one who does like anti cat calling and stuff, his name is Myth New York, and he does like, he does use like superhero images, and he, combines that with like old style propaganda from um, like the Soviet era and, and he tries to send political messages and he conveys stuff um, for equality and different causes and then there's other artists who it's more like personal expression or maybe it's empowering or maybe it just like brightens your day because I feel like something I, that I love about the art is that it finds a way to make otherwise mundane things beautiful. Something that could be like a brick wall or something very plain, suddenly it's this different world where you look at it and you can decide your own meaning what you get out of it, so. Interesting. Where do you start your runs? We do every weekend in the warm weather months, so we're doing a little less for the winter and we're doing the first one in a different city. This winter we'll be doing a Miami art run which I'm excited about because Wynwood Walls is there, which is a really huge mecca of mm -hmm, street art. Mm -hmm. But in the summer, we do every weekend. In the fall and the spring, we do every weekend. Oh. Summer Street, sometimes on Park Avenue, they have fantastic sculptures. Not always, you know, they commission things. So you probably take full advantage of Summer Street. First three Saturdays in August. Yeah, I try to do those every year. Now. You know, this probably doesn't always pay the rent and the bills. Did you work, uh, 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 I think you worked at uh, Back of My Feet for a while? I did, yeah. yeah how did you find them? And it, well, first, tell us the audience, our audience, what is Back of My Feet? Back on My Feet, it helps people who are transitioning out of homelessness, and it helps them by using the power of running, which it builds confidence, teamwork, and it's very motivating, and you have, like, a group of people that are, literally cheering you on and running with you. And Back on My Feet has Monday, Wednesday, Friday, early morning practices, and they have a whole system where if you're a part of the program, then you can 
go to the you have to go to these practices a certain amount and stuff and um, it helps people who are living in transitional shelters to not only build their confidence in their running abilities but also it helps with job training members get access to things that will help them with getting jobs and becoming independent mm -hmm. um, it's really amazing and it, it's it's great because it's something that us runners know how much running helps you mm -hmm. mentally and physically and so to see that help people who are like in a place where they need extra help is it's really cool mm -hmm. but how did you learn of them oh so i learned of them through um terrence so i'm friends with terrence gershberg the director people that hasn't even heard of back of my feet is here because uh, marnie's brought this two different worlds colliding but we all have one um common uh love which is running and just being outside and um taking uh, our, our adventures to the streets. I had donated shoes to them, and that's kind of how I first found out about them. I did like a shoe drive, uh -huh. and I went to drop them off. And then at the, the person who was working there at the time told me they had an opening. She's like, oh, you should apply for this. <laughs> so yeah, so I ended up eventually applying, and then down the road, got hired and I did marketing and development for them. Marketing and development. So what kind of work is that? Um, so it's doing things. I did their social media, which is something that I love that I do a lot. And I also did like the newsletter, um, photography stuff, communicating with fundraisers. They have a lot of people. The volunteers are amazing and a lot of them run the New York Marathon and raise funds for Back on My Feet. So it's like managing that and like public awareness. Wow, that's quite a lot. I yeah. mean, it is a wonderful organization and it's wonderful that, that they hire people and let them do their thing. Yeah. You know, it sounds like, uh, you know, your talents were really utilized. Social media, putting up websites. <laughs> so the Stamming Run Street is, is the website, which is fantastic. That's something you created yourself? I did, yeah. It is wonderful. I really Thanks. enjoyed it. And it's up to date because just recently, in fact, this past Sunday, you were one of the promoters, Light the Night 5K. Yeah. Tell us about why you were part of that. Light up the night, and I have a running friend. She's Brooklyn Mom on the Run on Instagram. Um, and she had thought of the idea, and she asked Allison and I, Allison, who is from Harlem Run, she's one of the creators of Harlem Run, she asked if we wanted to partner and, like, on this effort to get more lighting in New York City parks because there had been some recent events and attacks on women runners um, and also with it getting dark early and not having adequate lighting we don't want people to be afraid to run in the park since it gets dark by like 4 30 or something and there's not enough lighting so we did this run to draw attention to the fact that we need better lighting and we're hoping to get this um, change so that they bring in more lighting in the mm -hmm, parks mm -hmm. and the news came and covered it which was great that's a big help in raising awareness i love that uh, you that you got together with these other movements like Harlem runs and i saw run for fun yeah. with nicoletta he was there with her crew and he's uh from brooklyn it's fantastic all these movements a lot of them by women yeah you know like like allison nicoletta yourself yeah and it's good that you guys are you know can get together it was very empowering and it was great unity and a time where you know there was a lot of uh there's been a lot of division going on and turmoil turmoil as far as politically um so for us to come out and all come together for this run for a good cause and bring all the runners together it was a big group it was yeah, i was, I was there early you know i i it, the time got changed from 3.30 to 4, by the time I realized it was 4, I already was doing my run for, oh. for Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but it was great to see Nicoletta. I haven't seen her in a while. In light of recent violence in Central Park, dozens of runners, young and old, male and female, came together to light up the night with their glowing wristbands, hoping to illuminate a critical need. Get us lights! Get Get up, us. Light them up. More lights in Central Park. I was concerned about safety issues, especially recently attacks on women runners, and I thought it was a very good cause to have more lighting in the park because it gets dark so early. There's so many people in New York City, and with all the lights out, safety is a huge issue. 
And so they found safety and strength in numbers today, empowering each other by showing their support, speaking out to make sure that they could light the way to a safer park and safer community, not just for themselves, but for the future runners of tomorrow. One, two, three. <laughs> Running community has been working on it for quite a while. The dashing whippers, as you know, uh, they've been promoting proper lighting as well. And, yeah. and you had a few dashing whippets out there, too. We I did. saw them. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. great. It was great to see the running community come together for a positive cause. Like I said, positivity. Yeah. Thank you so much for you and your team doing that, that light up the night. It was a great success. And I love seeing it on Channel 5, mm -hmm. Fox 5 News. They did a great job covering you guys. Thank you. It sounds like this is now a full-time career for you. Run Street, right? Right, yeah. So you left the corporate world behind. <laughs> And, and you jumped both feet into this? I did, yeah. So, and I think you have a clothing line because you're wearing the Run Street shirt. Did you design that yourself too? I got a designer to do our logo, but I do, I'm working on getting some new shirts too because I want to get some local street artists to design some with, we have a wolf in our logo and I want to have like a bigger presence with the wolf and more kind of creative. Uh, so the wolf is your mascot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I saw something about the wolf pack. So that's you guys. Yeah, that's us. Okay, yeah. Run Street, the wolf pack. Yeah. Oh, and, and it's based in Manhattan? Uh, it is. I started, well, when I was starting it here in New York, I started in Brooklyn as a running group. But now we're all over, like we do art runs in Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens. Um, I've kind of lived all over myself. I'm in Queens right now. And but I'm very mobile and I, I know a lot of the areas now from living all over. Oh, so. <laughs> great. So I guess the best thing for people to find is just go to runstreet.com. Right, and, yeah. Uh, and check it out. I mean, it's extremely worthwhile. Okay, great. So, so how's it going? I mean, how long have you been doing this full time now? Um, I've been doing it maybe five months now. And I also, I work part time too, so that helps. Um, but. I coach people one-on-one, -on -one and I also sell training plans on my website. So there's the fitness side of it, and then there's the event side of it, uh -huh. and I'm planning more big events for spring and with winter, some here and then some in Miami. So. Oh, that's right. They said you're going to go Miami and do a run. Now, yeah. these runs that you do with Run Street, most are free, right? No, some of them are paid. So like it's like a ticketed event, like a race. Uh -huh. um, so, like, I did the race with Combody, which was the Prison Break 5K, and that was that was a different kind of race. Okay. So, Combody is a gym in the Lower East Side, and it was started by my friend Koss, who was formerly incarcerated, and he came up with the idea when he was in prison. Um, he lost a lot of weight, and then he trained his fellow inmates, and they lost a thousand pounds combined. And when he wow. came out, he couldn't find a job, and he thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to train people, and he wanted to help other people who are ex-cons find jobs. So he employs formerly incarcerated people at the gym. So basically, um, for our race, for the prison break, that's why it was that theme. And he has this really cool prison bus where they have a pull-up bar. And so one of the stops on our race was doing like arm hangs, uh, pull-up type exercises and we had like five stops where it was like boot camp style exercises that are similar to what people would do at Combody and then it was 5k running and it was really fun it was a creative right. event um, very creative well, I hope you do it again <laughs> we will yeah we had a lot of great feedback so oh my gosh that that is I never heard of this but it sounds so creative What's next? What's uh, what future challenges do you have? Do you do you do you have a, a destination one for yourself, for personally to you know to challenge yourself? Well, I'm gonna do the Miami half marathon um, when I'm there. I'll be doing an art run too there in January, and then beyond that, I'm not sure. Sometimes it's a little tricky with my training because I run so much with people I coach and stuff, and I also lead run boot camps at Combody. I found a great physical therapist, which is New York Custom PT, and um, that helps keep me running so that I don't get, I was getting a lot of injuries like in the last year or so until I started going there. So I, I hope to do another marathon. I've done the New York Marathon, and I would like to get a lot better time because I think that I was kind of injured when I did it and uh -huh. falling apart. I hit the wall, just things were not going well, but I did it.
Okay. But I would like to do another marathon and, and oh, cool. do it That's faster. That's interesting. So not, not everything just goes smoothly, but, uh, you know, you, you face the challenges and find uh, help, whatever they are, with it, because New York is rich in that. You can always find help on something that uh, if you know how to reach out. It sounds yeah. like you know how to do and you also know how to reach out. That's great. Oh, Thanks. one more thing. I, I wanted to, to cover this, this other challenge or this other event that you're doing called Addicts Athletics. Oh, right, yeah. Tell us about that. So that, um, I am doing it with one of the trainers from Con Body who we're friends and he's starting this really cool nonprofit who helps people who are in recovery and um, he is someone who's in recovery himself and that was part of why he had been in prison was for drugs. So basically the Addicts Athletics is to give people in recovery free fitness classes because similar to Back on My Feet, it recognizes how important fitness is and how it can help you mentally. So it can give people a positive outlet. So we're doing this triathlon fitness fundraiser to kickstart because it's just starting. The oh my God, effort. triathlon. So this biking, swimming, and running. <laughs> well, this is a fitness triathlon, so it's a little different. So we're oh. doing, he'll be leading a boot camp style class similar to Com Body style. And then I'll be leading a 5K and then we have a yoga instructor who will do a yoga class, so oh, it'll a be cool a great workout. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yoga, running, and and boot camp. Right. Uh, yeah. Listen, on that great positive note, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.